Hello, so my name is Michael Keneally and I'm filming this video in the beautiful and peaceful west of Ireland and I'm focusing on quite a violent topic, Mars transits Aries. And it's really important to understand the energy of Mars transiting Aries and it's more complicated than that in fact. Um, and indeed, there's um, a negative personal manifestation of that as well as a positive one. And indeed, I feel it's very likely that the negative social results of the Mars in Aries transit will be very major by the end of this year. So let's go into the detail. Um, so this is actually an add-on blog and video for our September Star Wheel Astrology and Healing Newsletter. And very importantly, um, go to the uh, September webpage on my Star Wheel Astrology website, in, where in fact there's a, a, a page, a wonderful page of charts and ephemeris and lunation charts. Um, in both Vedic and Western astrology for each month of 2020. And there you'll be able to see the phenomena that I'm now going to talk about in this video. So Mars starts September 2020 at three degrees Vedic Aries. So he's just transited out of Pisces and to make the transition from Pisces to Aries, he's transited through the Gandanta zone. And I'll be saying more about Gandanta zones later on, but Gandanta zones are the immaterial transition points from water sign to fire sign. They're particularly strong, two degrees either side of the transition point. They're vastly strong at the zero point. So Mars is just out of the Gandanta at three degrees Vedic Aries at the start of September. And in terms of his present transit of Aries, Mars actually transits Aries from August the 16th, 2020 to October the 3rd, 2020. And... Um, and on October the 3rd, he continues his retrograde and drops back into Pisces. But note that Mars actually returns again to Aries on the 24th of December 2020. And he doesn't finally leave Aries until the 22nd of February 2021. So there is a long transit from August the 16th until the 22nd of February although with a little drop back into Pisces um, from October the 3rd. And it is quite possible that on the social scale, and particularly in the United States, this Mars in Aries transit could be immensely decisive. And more about that below. Now, at the time that Mars is transiting Vedic Aries in September 2020, he's actually square to the Saturn-Jupiter-Pluto conjunction all month of September. The square to Saturn and Pluto is close and powerful. Now note that the Mars-Saturn conjunction is always potential for great frustration. Mars says, go, go, go. Saturn says, oh no, have you checked everything? Have you dotted all the I's crossed? What about this? What about that? And the two fight each other. At the social level, Saturn is social structures and control structures, useful or evil. And Mars pits himself against them. And that's what's happening in the United States. Um, it's also a, a very uh, noteworthy, noteworthy, difficult conjunction in love astrology. So if you have Mars conjunct Saturn in your charts, uh, there can be great frustration. And quite often people with the Mars-Saturn conjunction in their charts uh, project the aggression and the blocks and the frustration 
onto the partner. I do do obviously many uh, astrology readings online, including your love profile. And it's so worth hearing about your love profile. And particularly if you have Saturn conjunct Mars or indeed Saturn conjunct Venus, which is a whole other very difficult kettle of fish indeed. Um, but it's Mars is not just square Saturn, he's closely square Pluto in the heavens. And that is violent energy. So as spiritual beings, we humans need to develop the divinely linked perception to be able to see this sort of Mars energy going on and not engage with it, not get sucked in, but to use the energy that's there in a, like a truly positive way to achieve our life path and our targets and our incarnational life purpose in this life. So basically what I believe is happening and will happen is that authoritarian structured Saturn in Capricorn, where Saturn is very strong, will try to contain Mars in Aries. And of course, Mars will knee-jerk, fight back against Saturn. And I do predict that this will manifest as rioting and counter to that excessive state control at the social level. And I think it will manifest very badly in the United States. Um, sparked, if you like, by the eclipse of the 14th of December. Now that's the second eclipse in 2020 that's in exactly the same position as the two 9-11 eclipses um, of 2001. So they're violent. But actually the 14th of December eclipse is right on top of Donald Trump's um, Moon K2 conjunction. And as I've already put in a video, I predict that the, the balance of his mind will be affected. So whether there is an election or there isn't, whether he's elected or there isn't, my prediction is that that uh, eclipse will tip him into behaving almost like a sort of malevolent fairy energy, a dark fairy, just doing anything and, and, and coupled with this Mars in Aries transit, indeed Mars square Saturn, I honestly think there'll be uh, rioting in the United States, you know, November, December and into January, very sadly. Um, so at the personal level though, this Mars in Aries square Saturn transit will produce frustration in us. And negatively, you know, we can Facebook, Facebook endlessly about how awful Donald Trump is. But positively, we can use the frustration to analyse what's producing it and thus to develop our perception more aligned to the divine and develop our perception of who we're meant to be in this life, our incarnational life purpose, our destiny, and progress our life in that direction, whether inspired by vision or whatever. Um, so we can't actually survive if we try and bottle up the Mars-Saturn frustration boiling over or the Mars-Pluto frustration boiling over. We have to recognise it, we have to manage it. So this video and blog as an add-on to the September Astrology and Healing newsletter for us at Starwheel is very important if it helps you see how the frustration you will probably feel 
um, needs to be perceived and needs to be managed. Um, at its worst, um, Saturn blocking Mars is inability to take action despite directing the will. At its worst, it's the desire to hurt others. At its worst, it's the misuse or abuse of energy. At its worst, it's misdirected powers and capabilities, criminality, self-destroying forces and agents, misuse of procreative power, and at a lesser stage, moodiness, irritability, discontent, feelings of inferiority, Saturn in aspect to Mars, lack of energy, Saturn blocking Mars, the state of being unsatisfied because of the blocking, feeling of inferiority, activity paralysed, that really can happen and it may well happen strongly to you as an individual can be susceptibility to infection and epidemic. I'm drawing here on Reinhold Eberton's combination of stellar influences for the, his takes on the Saturn-Mars combination. Can be the discharge of pus. And above all, it can be failure. Failure caused through absence of proper plans or lack of energy. You might have a wonderful plan, but you just don't go about implementing it because of this Saturn-Mars contention, you can't manifest the Mars energy, you can't manifest it in the desired direction, and your wonderful plan comes to dust and ruin. And I hope that doesn't happen. Because at its best, this is a time, like a deep theme, for putting our energy into intuition and vision. Um, we need to be, as much as possible, inspired or visionary individuals. And that inspiration will generate the right plan or plans. And help will come at the right time. It may come from your own intuitive and visionary reserves, or it may, of course, come from you having like an astrology reading or a medium reading, whatever it is. So the next thing to note is that um, Mars is conjunct Neptune um, until about the 19th of September. So I've described that could be, you know, the failure and the idiotic visions energy made worse. Mars is conjunct Neptune in the Navamsha, that is. But after that, from the 20th of September until September the 23rd, Mars is actually conjunct K2, the south node, and that's an energy of anger, violence, well, or courage, if you can, you know, perceive what's going on. And, and there could be big links to your past life scripts and past life people particularly from September the 20th to September the 23rd. And please note this, that potential from Mars conjunct K2 in the Navamsha chart, the D9 chart, the, you know, the Varga chart derived from the chart for now, um, is doubled. And why is that? Because not only is Mars conjunct K2 in the Navamsha, but... Mars is transiting Ashwini, which is a K2 ruled sign. Um, but positively, look out for that Mars K2 conjunction in the Navamsha, giving you quick response and strong energies. Positively, we can utilize it as an energy of breakthrough. Okay, I want to talk about Gandanta. As I said at the beginning of this video, uh, before Mars reaches three Aries, which it does on the 1st of September, it has actually transited the Gandanta point from Pisces to Aries. And the Gandanta is certainly, you can feel it, from 28 Pisces to two Aries, maybe a bit wider. 
And the closer you are to the zero point, not Aries, the stronger the Gandanta connection that Mars will have. So the Gandanta is the transition point between a water sign and a fire sign. Uh, Pisces, Aries, Cancer, Leo and Scorpio, Sagittarius. And Gandanta energy is the dissolution of the material world. It is an immaterial energy. I have my moon in this Gandanta at the very, very end of Pisces where... You know, it, it, it gave me a very difficult start of connection to the immaterial world, to say the least, in many ways. And um, so Gandanta points are really important. And for me, they prove the validity of using sidereal zodiac with Lahiri Ayanamsha, the difference between sidereal zodiac and western tropical zodiac, because it is only the sidereal zodiac with Lahiri Ayanamsha that accurately declare the location of these Gandanta zones and they are so, so, so very important to know about and to identify if you have a natal planet in the Gandanta zone or when a transiting planet is going through the Gandanta zone. The deeper into the Gandanta zone you have a planet the more difficult the lesson of that planet may be to learn. And you'll need to understand and accept that planet's consciousness into yourself. Um, and what the Gandanta is all about is the reality of the immateriality of the manifest world we live in. It is Mahamaya, the great illusion. That is not to diminish its importance. It is supremely important because we incarnate here in Mahamaya to burn our negative karmas and to manifest the special seeds of potential talent and wonder maybe that were left unfinished from previous lifetime or are implicit in this incarnation. So I'm not saying, oh, Mahamaya is irrelevant, take no notice of it. But this world is in the true sense an illusion and if you have a planet in the Gandanta in your birth chart or if you're experiencing a transiting planet going through the Gandanta you have the chance to see beyond the unreality of this material world beyond Mahamaya into the true reality that is beneath okay in what ways has the true reality beyond this world been defined? Well, uh, Buddhism talks of nirvana. In Hinduism, there's a whole range of wonderful deity forms that can be fully connected as the root of all being. So the Shiva Nataraja dancing in his circle of flames, dancing universes in and out of being, dancing things in your life in and out of being. There's Lord Vishnu laying back under Ananta's heads, dreaming universes in and out of being. And the point is, as each universe gets more and more manifest, gets further from the God, the, it gets more and more imperfect. Perhaps this is the sense of Kali Yuga. And then Lord Vishnu sends avatars to try and help humanity stop the decline and ruin of their connection to the divine. But eventually... Lord Vishnu will draw a line and he will reabsorb his creation into himself and then manifest another universe. That's the Hindu take from Vishnu. I've already mentioned the one from Shiva. And then, of course, there's Krishna's flute. Um, and above all, underlying and creating this world of Mahamaya is the endless mating of Shiva and Shakti. So Hinduism has this 
wonderful perception of the immateriality of our world, of the utter importance of our world, but only if we can see it in relationship to the eternal divine reality and its nature. I'm struck that when Lord Shiva Nataraja in his dance, what if you look at his foot, what is he doing? He's stamping on a little figure. And that little figure is Aparasmara, the demon of ignorance. Think about it. So, oh yes, so just to add, uh, I've defined the Gandanta zones in terms of the sign transitions, water sign to fire sign, but in terms of the nakshatra transitions, the Gandanta zones are Revati to Ashwini, Ashlesha to Magha, and Jayesta to Mula. Those, um, you know, Gandanta zones are, of course, these increasingly immaterial zones, the, you know, the closer your planet or a transiting planet is to the transition point, the zero point. And indeed, it is in the uh, Jayesta Mula Gandanta, at the end of Mula, that uh, this eclipse of the 14th of December 2020, as I was talking about, occurs. And I would add that actually the final degree of uh, Scorpio is a book to Mula, and that is a very difficult degree. Um, and it would apply, I have found, if you have planets like at the end of the degree before 29, uh, sorry, you know, the end of the 28s, um, the end of 28 Scorpio, and not actually 29 to 30. The end of 28 equally, I feel, is, is a book to Moolah. 